Hey, ladies and gentlemen, here we are on another Wednesday evening. I'm Tommy. And I'm Joe. And this is Tojo Live. Welcome to Tojo Live. Hey guys, we are glad to be here with you on another Wednesday evening with Tojo Live. We, uh, Joe and I, we have talked about this before. We love this time that we get to be with you guys. It's kind of a kind of a midweek boost. For us, in between Sunday uh, services, and uh, we just love interacting with you guys. So thank you all for being here, and thank you for making this show uh, so special. We do, do want to open the passage scripture, and uh, uh, the chapter verse thirty-four, and it says, and this is after Jesus had 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 been teaching his, his apostles and others there for a while. And it says this in Matthew 13, 34, Jesus used stories to tell all these things to the people. He always used stories to teach people. I love that because there's power in story. And as many of you know, uh, we have been emphasizing people telling their stories this year. Our theme is let me tell you about my Jesus. And part of telling people about your Jesus is telling people about what Jesus has done in your life. You know, we have had um, several stories that have been recorded that we show on the screen as we begin our services. We will continue to do that throughout this year. And we have been emphasizing that each one of us should should be equipped to be able to share our story. You may not be an expert in the Bible, but you are an expert on you <laughs> and what Jesus has done in your life. And nobody knows that better than you do. And so there is power in story. And it's it's a tradition and a format that has pe been passed down from Jesus. Jesus oftentimes used stories to teach. And then this quote is from Robert McKee, and it is this. Storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas into the world. That's beautiful. Storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas into the world because there's something about a story that gives it handles. We could teach concepts, we could teach principles, we could teach commands, we could teach all these, these facts and these figures, but it's when we grasp that through a story that it really takes on a deeper meaning for us. And I think that's why the Bible, the majority of the Bible is story. Matter of fact, we're going to be doing a series later this year talking about his story and your story, and how they fit in together. Okay, we're going to spend about 10 weeks uh, later on this year looking into that, and we're going to do kind of a, 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 a mighty summarized version of the whole Bible. We're going to be starting with Genesis. We're going to go through Revelation in about 10 weeks, but we're not just going to be looking at that story. We're going to be looking at how your story fits in with that story. And I'm excited about that and, and looking forward to, uh, to that series as well. Joe, how are you this evening, my friend? Good Brother, to see I'm you. great. It's good to be here once again. You know, I love the way you opened us up talking about a story and how powerful it is. You know, it's interesting. There's a, there's a phrase that says a picture's worth a thousand words. And yet, you know what? I've never seen a movie that's as good as the book. <laughs> you know, it, it's, yeah. it's the truth. There's something about a story that paints the picture so beautifully that it literally puts you right there inside the moment. And uh, obviously the Bible does it that. And, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, the stories and the parables that Jesus tells us that do that as well. But uh, I think it's just so powerful and it brings us to our whole theme for the year. Let me tell you about my Jesus. You know, when we've gone through something and come out on the other end of it, you know, and we and we thank God for what Jesus did with us. It's our calling as Christians to share that because, friends, we've been blessed so we could bless others. 
And if, if you've ever gone through something that is really difficult and, and someone that you knew came up to you and said, look, I went through this, you're going to be okay. It really brings comfort yeah. to you knowing that you're not alone. So I think it's a, uh, it's, it's such a blessing to be part of what we're doing this year and our theme for the year. And Tama, you've done a tremendous job um, just directing and producing some of the testimonies that our congregation have made. And yeah. obviously that's going to continue for the remaining months. Yeah, we've got, it's really kind of exciting because we've got, we've got our first online uh, member, I guess, online attender that is going to be sharing their story. And we're actually going to be going on location in Kentucky to film his story. Yep. So that at least that's the plan right now. So <laughs> wonderful. That's incredible. I know. It's kind of neat. It, it, it'll be a first for Glen Cove Christian Church. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. Look forward to that. <laughs> Joe, I like what you said about, about story in comparison to pictures. And it's a little dangerous for me to say because my wife is a photographer. Um, and I will throw something at you. <laughs> and she will throw something at me. <laughs> but I, I agree with you. Stories can paint a picture that a canvas or a or film could never recreate. I mean, it's it's just when when a story is put together well. It, it is just a beautiful thing in, in giving people that picture. And you can, you, you not only see a picture, you see yourself in that picture. And so it is a, it is a beautiful thing. So guys, there's a reason we're talking about stories so much here uh, this evening, because uh, we have a special guest uh, with us tonight who is a professional storyteller and has, has been telling stories for a long time. Um, but, um, but it's kind of taken that to the, to the next level now. And, and he understands the power of story and, uh, and, and what that can do. He is uh, the, uh, the minister at Spencer Christian church in Kentucky, just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. He's also a storyteller and uh, he has been a friend of mine for many, many years. And we are actually uh, both products of the same church. And so um, and it, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they're proud of that or if they don't want people to know that. But uh, <laughs> but either way. And so uh, we are going to have a special guest with us today. So, guys, let's put our hands together for Doug Martin. Hey, guys. Hey, how are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing wonderful, Doug. Doing wonderful, man. Glad to have you on here with us. And um, as, as Doug and I go way back. I actually lived with Doug and his family for about a year or so while I was working as a, an associate minister at Spencer Christian Church, which is the church that, that Doug is not only the minister there, he started that church. I think I came in about a year after the the church began and worked with them for a while and um, of course i was I, I was not married yet at that point i was you know not too long out of college and completely broke uh <laughs> but didn't care okay that's that's kind of the way i operated sometimes i still operate I that say, way it's kind of the same now yeah yeah you know. when my well, we, when my, we, we did our best to keep you broke too when you worked with us so uh <laughs> We made sure that we, uh, you know, held to that standard for you. So. <laughs> it's all right. I I had a lot of fun at, at Spencer Christian and made a lot of connections there, connections that I, that I still hold today. I think it was 1999 when I resigned there at Spencer Christian. And so it has been, wow, 23 years. Wow. It's been a long time. It has been a long time. All That's right. crazy. So can I just point out, I, I got to bring this up. I got to tell this story on him, okay? The first time hey, I met- it's about stories today, it so is, feel it free is. to tell The story. first time I met Doug Martin, I hope this doesn't embarrass him, embarrass him too much. I don't remember hearing him preach. Sorry, Doug. I don't remember, I really don't remember anything about him, except that after he was preaching on revival at Pleasant Springs, and he, they, they went downstairs to the kitchen and they brought up some silverware. And when they, slid, <laughs> Doug, Doug oh, I know where she's going with this. Doug showed me 
how to stick a bunch of spoons to your face. <laughs> What was it, like seven or eight spoons or something? Yeah, so, something like that. It's been a long time since I did that. Um, but, yeah, I can <laughs> hang spoons from a spoon from my nose and then here from here. And, and you know, uh, if it was a good, hot, sweaty day, spoons stick a lot easier. Yeah, no, but, but you didn't use you didn't sweat doug you you were you were huffing like blowing into the spoon to make it somewhat moist and you That's had true. to hang it off your ears off your forehead it, if i remember correctly there were nine and if i can ever come across the photograph because that was my first picture of you doug <laughs> i took yeah, a I, picture of you with all these spoons hanging off your face yeah i haven't i haven't done that since my kids became adults so it's been a long time <laughs> since i did any spoon hanging uh, on my face it was quite quite remarkable. It made an impression on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad I could impress you that way. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Doug, we, we want to talk about stories and the power of stories here today. But, but first and foremost, tell us about Doug Martin. What is your story? Oh, wow. Well, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I have uh, lived in Kentucky my entire life. I uh, grew up in a little place called Kiwi, Kentucky, which is where Tommy grew up. And uh, we affectionately refer to Kiwi as the center of the universe and uh, grew up there. Uh, Tommy and I went to the same uh, same church. I'm a little older than Tommy, though. I think we determined about four or five years older than Tommy. Um, and uh, so I got through school and out of, out of Kiwi before Tommy did. Went into the ministry, started preaching um, 1998. Oh, no, 1988. Wow. I gave, I, I shorted myself a decade. Started preaching in 88 and uh, have been doing that ever since. Uh, I've been married to my wife for uh, 35 years and uh, we have three adult children. And uh, and so uh, no grandkids yet, but that's that's what we're hoping for next is our kids are married, you know, and we're hoping for grandkids. So and in a nutshell, that's kind of kind of my story. Uh, you know, I, I've lived in Kentucky my whole life and Somebody asked me once, they said, uh, they said, Doug, what would you be if you weren't a Kentuckian? And uh, I said, I'd be ashamed. So I'm pretty proud uh, <laughs> to, be, to be from Kentucky. And, uh, and so glad to be able to share with you guys tonight. <laughs> awesome. 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 Well, we're definitely glad to have you on here tonight and, and, and to talk about um, storytelling. I, and I know that's been a part of your ministry from the get-go you know because stories are so powerful in in communicating the gospel and we call them illustrations uh, and and stuff like that <laughs> but they're stories and like i said in the beginning they they give handles to things and 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 joe and i we both use use stories as well and you could just you could just tell when you go from stating facts, which we have to do from time to time, obviously, and then you go into a story that kind of backs up those facts and you can see people's face go from to, you know, it's like they get it. They identify with that. Mm -hmm. When you tell a story and I've, and I've heard, I've never had anybody come up to me and go, you know, I really identify with that point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I've had many people come up to me and said, "You know what? I really identify with that story. I really identify with what you were talking about in that." And every one of us, we have a a unique story in 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 what um, in, in how we we talk about what God has has done in our lives. So, Doug, um, I don't know exactly when this happened for you. Maybe even as a little kid, I'm not sure. Like you said, you were a little older than me. And uh, Doug and I, we knew each other, but we didn't really hang out until we were, until I graduated college. I really got to know uh, Doug, especially when I, I lived a year with him and his family and, uh, and got to know him and just cherish uh, to this day that relationship. Uh, it's been a great relationship. Mm -hmm. But what, what drew you into storytelling and, and, and also what drew you into taking it to the next level? Because you're in the process now of kind of taking that to the next level. Yeah. Uh, so I was born into a family of storytellers. I mean, we're all storytellers. People tell stories every day of life, you know, 
but I was I was born into a, a family really on both sides, both my mother's side and my father's side. I'm I'm from Appalachia, uh, so the the mountains of eastern Kentucky are home to me. And uh, both my mom and dad came from really big families. And whenever we would all get together, it was better than going to the movies. Yeah. Because people would start to tell stories. And so I, I grew up surrounded by people who could really tell good stories. And they didn't know that it was a, a, an, an art or a craft that could be worked on. They just, it's just, it was a part of their nature. We just got my uncles, my aunts, my cousins um, could all tell stories. And, uh, and, and so I grew up in that environment. And yeah. so when I, when I made the step to go into ministry, which wasn't a career choice, it wasn't a plan. I wasn't planning to enter into ministry. The Lord just kind of grabbed me. Uh, right as I was coming out of high school and set me on this course of, of being a preacher and being in ministry. So I, all of a sudden I had to begin to communicate scriptural truths. And so it was just second nature for me to use stories to help communicate those truths. And you've used the phrase, Tommy, uh, several times already today, uh, handles. Yeah. Uh, I really like that phrase. That's one I use a lot often. Uh, stories can help put handles on the messages that you're trying to share with people. And so it just, it was just second nature for me, but I do believe that anybody can be a storyteller. It's, it's, it is a craft that you can work at and, and, and your story is unique to you, just like mine's unique to me and they're all God given. Yeah. And, and we should, you know, we should share the stories that God gives us, especially if it, if it circles back. Now, yeah. what I learned pretty quick when I started preaching was that Jesus was a storyteller. Yeah. You know, the parables are all stories. He put handles on truths for us. And, you know, you can remember the, 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 the stories that Jesus told, and he used that to communicate. And it's, a, it's an incredible tool for communication because it's more than just storytelling is more than just words. It's more than just a lecture. Uh, or a presentation, a story goes deeper and it affects people at a deeper level. And you guys have alluded to that already, but that's that's one of the beautiful things about it. So I, I just I guess I could say I stumbled into it or it's just who I was uh, yeah. as far as, you know, to, to tell a story. Uh, I also learned at a young age that if you could tell a good story, you could get out of trouble sometimes. <laughs> um, or or you could win friends like I, I had a job once when I was uh, when I was younger and uh, and I was working uh, in a I was working. I was, it was when I was in college and I was working to clean dorms uh, during the summertime and I wasn't the best at that job. Uh, and early on, my boss really gave me a hard time. But what I discovered was my boss loved a good story. And so by the end of the summer, I've been telling stories all summer long. She loved me. She, I was, I was like her best employee, even though my, my, my quality of work didn't pick up. She just liked a good story. And so it helped me uh, with my relationship with her. So it go. can help in a lot of ways. I hope Denver Great. doesn't listen to this. <laughs> hey, stories are powerful. They can get you out of trouble or get you into trouble too. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is that is true. That is true. And, and it, it's the thing that that I feel like happens is there are parts of whether it's a, a a sermon or a or a presentation or whatever. There are parts of that that are that are facts and figures and points and things like that that we, that need to be a part of that. <laughs> And that really appeals to us intellectually, but it doesn't appeal to us emotionally. But when you tell a story, whether it's your story, and I, I think those are the best stories, but even if it's a, a, a story of somebody else, it appeals to us emotionally mm -hmm. and it makes it, it makes it more meaningful to us because if, if something doesn't grab us emotionally, it doesn't grab us. Yeah. Yeah. But it, what, what, what I always like to say is that, a story engages the imagination of the listener. Mm. And when, and when you engage the imagination of the listener, then it does, it takes a deep root. It affects people emotionally. I tell some family stories, uh, you know, about like my granddads, my, my, both of my granddads had a faith heritage that was passed on to me. 
And so sometimes I'll tell a story about one of them and their. No, oh, we lost Doug. Oh, hold on. We might get him back. I don't That's know. all right. Things like this happen sometimes, guys. This is just a part of our story. Okay. <laughs> it's called intermission. <laughs> it's called intermission. intermission. There Listen, you go. I will tell you guys um, something that, that I resonated with, with him telling that. Um, Apollonia. I'm going to brag on my kid for a minute. Apollonia, we are, we are staying up tonight until her book is done. Yep. If that tells you, I may be up for three more days, but we're not going to sleep until her book is done, but she is getting ready to publish her first book. And I sat down and read it and it transported me into another world. My daughter lights up when she tells, talks about her stories, these stories, this is where, this is what her passion is. And I, I kind of see the same thing with, um, with Doug. I, I see where um, Doug, when he goes to tell stories, Doug, Doug tells he's got perfect timing. He's got perfect. Yep. He's just really remarkable, remarkable to listen to. Yeah. The thing about Apollonia is she's been telling stories since she's been able to talk. But yeah, man. When she was little, even before Dylan was born and she's two and a half years older than Dylan. So it was two and a half. And she was younger than two and a half. And she would sit in her car seat in the back of the van. And we'd be like on a two hour trip. And she would, just tell stories the whole trip. I mean, I'm not sure she breathed. <laughs> it was just. And is this like a vivid imagination? Is she ta talking about, or is there something specific she's talking about? Or I don't know. She used to would tell like fantasy. She like just make stories. up stories when she was in the van. Yeah. But but I mean that's what she's doing now. She's making up these stories from scratch. And but obviously she has. Uh, um, you know, polish that craft with character development and stuff like that. And, and part of her, a big part of her uh, graduating this year, her senior project was um, writing her first book. Wow. And so Tammy has been going through this book. She has it written. Tammy's doing the editing process and, and part of her graduation will be the release of this book. So it will be available on Amazon. It will. It is it is currently available on Amazon because we're we're this is this is Is that supposed to be public though? Is that is. supposed to be known? It will be oh. known by the time this airs because we're a little bit behind on this. We're oh okay. This yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, yes, it will be it is available on Amazon. It's called Irugo. E R U G O. Irugo. Irugo. And so, and that it's a powerful, she's telling an amazing, powerful story. And I'm not going to, I am going to brag. When she tells these stories, like I said with Doug, she lights up. She goes into another world. She is able to relate to people around her because of these things that she's telling. And when I read the book, I'm not just kind of doing a little baby clap going, oh, that's such a good book. I like, it brought tears. I'm, I'm yeah. still in mourning because I've finished the book and there's no more yet to read. So, um, yeah, very powerful. I do All believe right. we have Doug back. So let's, I think let's, we do. Try, let's try again. Here we go. All we'll right. Go. So I, I apologize. I, and it could happen again because that was an incoming call that knocked me off. I'm using my phone. Uh, so, okay. That's all right. That, hopefully no it won't worries. happen again. A as I said, when you went off, I said, this is just part of our story. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you you go. know, stories reflect real life. And as we know, real life is not always smooth. And there he goes again oh, as we are talking God. about it. He's got another call coming in. There oh, there he is. is. He's back. Is. He got back quicker this time. Uh, yeah. So it's the same person calling in. So <laughs> they called me again. I'm sorry. So sorry. Right. we were just talking. We were talking a little bit while you were uh why you were in that black hole that comes up when, when you, when you go off yeah. the screen, we yeah. were talking a little bit about uh, Apollonia, our daughter. I, I heard most, of, I was able to hear most of what you were saying, even though you couldn't hear me. So that was, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm so excited for her. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really exciting. And like I said, she'd been telling stories. She, she was able to talk and, um, and it's, and it's kind of come full circle because at one point she's had different, desires as she's grown up at one time she wanted to be a photographer because her mommy's a photographer Fashion mm -hmm. designer. at one time she wanted to be a preacher and 
Mm -hmm. I don't know. Independent Christian churches in Kentucky are not too keen on women <laughs> preachers. So I told her, if you do that, you're probably going to have to become a disciples of Christ. But, uh, <laughs> um, but she, she grew out of that. It was funny. One day she got up and she was, I mean, she was probably two, I think it was before Dylan was born. And she said she wanted to preach a sermon and she stood up and she got behind the coffee table and she goes, blah, 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 blah. Go UK, blah, 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 blah. So words of wisdom, words. Of yeah, there you she go. Just, she, she mixed our two religions there as she was preaching. And it wasn't even March. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Joe, just to let you know, you're in the minority here. You are centered around two men who love Jesus and love UK basketball almost as much as Jesus. And Doug is gone again. Oh! So while, while he's gone, Tammy and Tommy, is Apollonia's book one story or is it a, you know, like a, a series of different stories throughout it? The, the plan, it's one story. And the plan is that there will be two more. It will two, be a two trilogy. It will be a trilogy. Wow. By the time she's done. But the, uh, and the how many, how many one, pages is it? Um, the first one? About 150 or something like that. So. About 150 so it's pages. It's not a real, real huge long read, but it's a. It's that's a. a good, that's a significant book. I, I tell you, I, I was brought to tears multiple times, and when the book. I haven't in, read it yet. Oh gosh, you gotta read it. It's good. It's good. So stories have the ability to just transport you somewhere, and I think they Jesus do. knew that. And look at what the stories that Jesus told. When he was talking to a bunch of, of country people, he talked about farming. When he was talking to a bunch of fishermen. He talked about fishing. Yeah, I mean that's Jesus knew what got to people's hearts, and that's that's why I think he was so effective. There you go. You know when uh, when the 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 woman <laughs> brought in the bottle of pure nard and she poured it out on Jesus, preparing him for his burial, and Judas and some of the other apostles were kind of like, "What's going on? What do you, we could sell this and 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 all that stuff?" And, and Jesus, obviously, he he kind of um, confronted them about that. And he says, what she has done is a beautiful thing. And he says, wherever the gospel is preached, this story will be told. Yeah. He didn't say that about anything. He didn't say that about the Ten Commandments. He didn't say that about, you know, some of the things that he taught in the Sermon on the Mount, which part of that was stories as well. But, <laughs> but, but he didn't make the point. And, you know, this, he said, this story will be told as well, because there's so much significance in that story. All right, we got Doug back. We, we got, Doug back. got Doug back. All right, I hope I, I hope I fixed it. I hope we don't get interrupted again. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I fixed it this time. All hey, that's right. the joy of being live, you know. There that's you go. You never know. Exactly. You never know. Exactly. Doug, what what makes storytelling so powerful? Well, I think I think one thing is it gives you it gives the end of the, the teller the opportunity to express express what's on their heart. Uh, people want to hear how other people feel, and they want to hear they want to hear that. One of the things I like about meeting new people is I want to know their story. Hey, tell me where you're from. Tell me what 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 growing up was like. Tell me what you tell me what's important to you. Um, I think we have an interest in in others, but we also, as we were saying earlier, it also leads us to identify ourselves. So I, I was before the phone start phone started ringing, I started getting kicked off. I was talking about my granddads, and uh, what I I know I hit a home run when I tell a story about my granddads, and somebody in the audience comes up and says, "When you were talking about your granddaddy, it made me think of my granddaddy." Mm. Yeah. And and what it did is it that's that, that's that emotional side. It takes a person to a deep place. And I think it happens when your imagination is engaged, when there's something familiar about the story that uh, people can identify with, you know. And so it, it, stories are powerful and they're a powerful tool when it comes to sharing fa your faith, too, because because each of us have a faith story. It's different. My story is going to look different than Joe's story will look or your story, Tommy, will look. But we all have a faith story. And, and I often tell people uh, when they're sharing their faith, I say, you know, sh tell people about Jesus. It's, it's really easy. Just tell them what Jesus has done for you and then tell them what Jesus can do for them. And it's easy to share your faith when it's a personal story, you know. So, so that, that's a powerful thing. Yeah. 
And we even see this with, with Paul. And of course, Paul was an intellectual. Um, if you're familiar with, with the four personality styles, he was a mind. He was a knowledge seeker. And, and oftentimes you think of those type of people. They're, they're all in the facts. It was like, Step one, step two, step three, this, this is what it is. Don't give me all the fluff. <laughs> but Paul, even being that kind of person, had a great ability to be able to tell a story, especially his own faith story. <laughs> um, there's, there's a few places in the Bible that you can find that. One of them is in Acts chapter 26, where, where Paul is just sharing his story. And, and, he, and he's in a situation where, you know, he's he's in danger uh, for his life. He's been arrested and all this stuff. And instead of instead of trying to get out of it or, or trying to, to come up with a story to get out of it, he uses his what we oftentimes call a testimony, which is your faith story. <laughs> and he just shares his faith story, what his life was like before he came to Jesus what the circumstances were around him coming to Jesus and how his life changed after coming to Jesus. And, it, and it's as simple as that. And nobody knows other than God, nobody knows your story better than you do. And, and I think that's what, what gives that faith story so much power. And listen, yeah. for those of you that are listening, your faith story will connect with people some people better than my faith story does. That's why we all need to be sharing our faith story. There are some people that my faith story will connect better with. There's some people that Joe's faith story will connect with. Doug's faith story will connect with. And that's why we all need to be sharing our story. <laughs> because there's people that I may not be able to reach with my story, but you can reach with your story. And so I just uh, I just encourage everyone to, to 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 share your story. In fact, that's part of what we're doing with the Glencoe Christian Church. My stories. Um, we yes. just returned from Kentucky, where we went and and filmed on site to one of our regular attenders from Kentucky. Um, and we filmed his story, and yep. and that'll be airing in in the next couple of weeks. So. Um, the, the stories are powerful and there are people that I've been going to church with for three years now that when they sit down behind the camera and start telling their story, my jaw drops open because I didn't know all that. about Right. Them. Right. Right. I, I know uh, what it was about a month or so ago. Somebody said in our small groups and, and we, we emphasize small groups because we believe in, on Sunday morning, you get inspiration, but on in small groups, you get transformation. That's where the transformation takes place. And, and somebody was sharing in our small group one time and they were they were kind of alluding to that. And they said, you know, I love Sunday morning. It's great. I love the music. He said, but in small groups, I get to hear people's stories. Yeah. I get yeah. to understand their story. And, and I just thought it was cool that he used that word here in the midst of us doing this this year, because there is there's so much so much power in that. Doug. um. I know you've got a plethora of stories. Do you have one or two stories that you could share with us here this evening? Oh, I guess I guess I could. I, I really don't know which one to go with. Uh, that's the thing about it is there's just so many things you can do. So many things you can do with stories. You got your, you know you have your personal stories, and then also I like to tell Bible stories. Uh, and one of the reasons I like to tell them is because we don't tell them enough anymore, and a lot of people don't know the stories from the Bible. Um, and then I, I like to tell old stories as well. So, uh, so, uh, you know, so, so let me think, I, how about I tell you one that, um, uh, that happened. So it's a real story that happened to me that I've used to demonstrate or to help apply a passage of scripture. So right. in the, in the gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter, Jesus is teaching what's called the sermon on the Mount. It takes a couple chapters for him to cover the entire sermon on the Mount. And at the very beginning of the sermon, he does, he, he shares the Beatitudes, you know, blessed are these and blessed are those. And then he goes into a passage about being salt and light. You know, he says, you're the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its saltiness, it's no good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled by men. And then the next verse, he says, you're the light of the world. 
a city on a hill cannot be hidden and people don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone. So let your light shine before men so they may see your good deeds and praise your father in heaven. I've always loved that verse, that passage. And so so I've often told a story that that applies to that passage. And it's about a time when I was growing up and Tommy, not far from where you and I grew up is the Rock Castle River. And the Rock Castle River is a scenic, wild river that runs through parts of southeastern Kentucky. And it is. It's a wild river. Nobody lives on the river. It's uh, it's surrounded by the Daniel Boone National Forest. So it's protected land. And uh, and we used to go there as as a family in camp when I was a kid. In fact, it was it, where we would go to camp was only about 12 miles from where I lived. But it was like our big vacation. We would go and camp. And uh, and one of the things about the Rock Castle River is it is one of the snakiest places I have ever been in my entire life. I mean, we rarely went to the Rock Castle River and didn't have a snake encounter. I mean, they were everywhere. You'd, you'd be going down the river in a boat and the snakes would just swim right up to the to the to the boat. And look at you. You know, and you'd say, hey, look, there's a snake. And the snake would say, hey, look, the dummy in the boat. You know, I mean, you know, it was just all kinds of and so so we were there as the 4th of July, uh, just like we've gone through the 4th of July, middle of the summer, 4th of July holiday. And we were there camping. And uh, and one night we decided we would fish after dark. And so we got in our little John boat and my brother was in the front of the boat and, and I was in the middle of the boat. My 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 stepdad, and my sister were sitting in the back of the boat next to the motor. And uh, and so we didn't have any lights on the boat. So we lit we lit a Coleman lantern and set it right in the center of the boat. Now, I don't know if you've ever lit a Coleman lantern in the middle of July, middle of the summer in the month of July on a river in Kentucky, but here's what happens. When you light a light on the riverbank in Kentucky in the middle of the summer, mosquitoes yes. from about three zip codes show up. <laughs> and so we, we couldn't fish. I mean, we literally couldn't fish because we were too busy smacking the mosquitoes. I mean, we were miserable. So somebody came up with the idea. They said, let's turn, let's, let's pull the boat off to the bank, tie off on the bank and turn us light out and fish in the dark. Sounded like a great idea. So I remember my brothers in the front, we were easing in, we'd already shut the motor off and we were easing into the bank. And my brother was standing up on the front of the John boat as we were coming into the bank. And this was a high bank. Uh, and there were roots from all the trees near the bank that were sticking out. So there's a big root sticking out from the bank. And as we're as we're gliding in to, to tie off, my brother says, I'm going to I'm going to tie off on this root. And he has the rope in one hand and, and that he's going to use to tie us off and secure us. And he's about to grab the root and pull us in. And that's when he stops. And he looks to me because I was sitting next to the, to the lantern. He says, he says, Doug, hand me that lantern. So I gave him the lantern and, and he eases up to that root with that light where he can see. And he's about to put his hand on the root when the next thing he does is goes, ah, and he comes bouncing back through the boat to the back of the boat. And, and the reason he did that was because there, there was a big old snake laying on top of that root. And he almost put his hand on that snake and he wow. didn't see the snake until he had the light there. And yep. then what I like to tell people is this. There are people who are walking hand in hand with the devil, that old serpent, and do not know it because there is no light. Wow. Now, who did Jesus say the light of the world is? We. We're the light of the world. Yeah. So we let our light shine so other people can see. And when we're not allowing our light to shine for Christ, then there are people who are in danger all the time, walking hand in hand with the devil and never know it because we're not shining our light. So that's that's a story that happened in our youth that we've been able to I've been able to apply to Scripture and use in Scripture. And I always like telling that story. Uh, I, I really like the part where I get to, to shout and scream a little bit when I'm reenacting my brother going to the moving to the back of the boat as he whipped, whipped, whipped by me to get to the back of the boat because of the snake. So, that, so that's an example of story. Do, do I have time to tell another one? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. This one's a little bit longer. So, I, but, but it, this is an old story and, and see stories should teach lessons. That's these handles we're talking about. It's about teaching lessons. And this yeah. is an old 
European folk tale that I heard years and years ago, but I love to tell the story because it has an incredible message with it. There's a lesson to it. So it kind of goes like this. I'll try to rush through it because I don't want to take too much time, but I want you to get the gist of the story. It's a story about a man who was always hungry, always lonely, and always poor. This is an old story. It's been handed down for you know centuries. Uh, one morning, that man woke up, always hungry, always lonely, always poor, and he'd had enough of it. He decided that he was going to try to find God to ask God why he was always hungry, always lonely, and always poor. So he leaves his little shack. He gets out on this trail, uh, this little road that, that, that meanders through the woods. He's walking. He's determined he's going to find God. This day, I'm going to find God and ask him why I'm always hungry, always lonely, and always poor. Well, as he's walking through the woods, he goes through a really thick section of the woods. Have you ever been in the woods where this, it kind of blocks the sun out? And it's kind of dark and he's in that and he's and, and he's on high alert. He feels like he's being watched when all of a sudden out of nowhere, a giant wolf jumps out on the road in front of him. And the wolf looks at him and he says, hey, man, where are you going? So so this is a European folktale. So apparently in Europe, wolves can speak. And so this wolf <laughs> is talking. Where are you going? And the man looked at him. He's a little nervous. He says, well, I'm, I'm going to find God because I, I, my entire life I've always been hungry. I've always been lonely. I've always been poor. And I'm going to ask God to help me. And the wolf looks at him, growls a little. And then he says, well, if you find God, will you ask him to help me? Because I'm always hungry, too. And the man says, I sure will. The wolf jumps off the road, runs back out into the woods. The man keeps walking. Now, he walks out of the woods and he comes to a place where he's kind of in a meadowland. And uh, there's a great big house on the hill and the road bends right there. It turns right there at the foot of the hill where the great big house is. And as he's looking at the house, as he's walking down the road, he begins to hear a woman cry. And he notices that right there next to the road, sitting on a stump, is, is a, a beautiful young woman. And he says, he says, he says, ma'am, are you OK? And, and she looks at him and she's got tears coming down her eyes. And she says, she says, I'm OK. But my whole life, I've always I've always been lonely. And I've got this big house. I've got all the money I could ever need. I just need somebody to share it with. And the man says, well, I've always been lonely, too. In fact, I'm going to try to find God to get an answer for why I've always been lonely. And, uh, and she said, well, if you find God, will you tell him I'm lonely, too, and see what he has for me, what he'll say to me? And so he says, I will. So he keeps on walking. He comes to a place where the road goes by the river. And there's great big old trees by the river. And uh, as he's walking next to those trees, he hears the wind blowing. And in the wind, he hears something that says, hey, man, where are you going? And he's like, who's that? And he says, it's me. It's the tree. And sure enough, one of the trees right there, I guess just like wolves in Europe, trees can talk to. The tree was talking to the man. And, and he, says, he, he, says, he says, where are you going? And he says, well, the man says, I've always been hungry. I've always been lonely. I've always been poor. I'm going to find God to get an answer for this. And the tree says, well, if you find God, I have a problem, too. Even though I'm right here planted by the river, I'm always thirsty. If you will, ask God to help me. And the man said, I sure will. He keeps walking. He walks all day. It's getting close to the end of the day. And he's in this territory he's never been before. And that's when he hears from above a deep voice that says, man, where are you going? And he, he can tell there's authority in this voice. And he, he's a little bit afraid. And he says, he says who's there? And, and the voice says, it's me. It's the Lord. And, and the man says, I've been looking for you. And the Lord says, I know, you know, because he knows everything. I know, you know. And, um, and so he, he shares with the man how, how he's been frustrated in life, always lonely, always, always hungry, always poor. Uh, and, and, and he asked God to help him. And then he shares with God what the wolf said to him and what the young girl asked about and then what the tree asked about. And God gave him instruction on what to tell the tree, what to tell the young girl, uh, young woman, and what to, to, to tell the wolf. And then here's what God said to him. And as far as you're concerned, all you need to do is turn around and walk back the way you came and everything you ever wanted will be provided for you. So the man's pretty happy. In fact, he's he's walking pretty fast by the time he gets back to where the tree was. And the tree stops him and says, did you see God? And he says, yeah. And he said, well, did God, what did God tell you? He said, well, God told me all I need to do is walk back down this road and everything I'd ever need would be provided. And the tree says, well, what did God say about me? And the man says, here's what God said about you. He said that when you were a sapling, somebody buried a treasure chest next to you 
between you and the river. And that treasure chest is keeping your roots from getting to the water at the river. And that's why you're always thirsty. Well, the tree shook with excitement. Some leaves fell off. And he says to the man, he says, well, then please dig that treasure up. You can have it. Uh, all I want is to be able to get something to drink. And that's when the man said, I can't do that. God told me all I had to do is walk back down this road and everything I'd ever need would be taken care of. And I ain't got time for that. And he kept on walking. Well, he gets to the place where the girl was, the young woman, and, uh, and, and she's excited to see him. And he tells him that God told him all he had to do is come back down this road and everything he'd ever need would, would be provided for me. He'd never be hungry, lonely, or poor again. And, uh, and, and then he says, and here's what God told me to tell you. God said that one day there would be a man who comes down this road right in front of your house who is lonely as you are. When that man comes, you're to marry that man and have a life together with him. And, uh, and so the woman grabs him, kisses him right square on the mouth. He pushes her away and says, what are you doing? He says, I don't have time for this. I just got to keep walking back down the road. And he walks off and leaves that girl who obviously was ready to marry him and had the big house and the wealth. He walks, walks off and leaves her. He gets to the woods. The wolf is waiting for him. And uh, when he gets to the wolf, he tells the wolf about everything that happened. He tells the wolf about the girl, about the tree, about what God told him to tell the girl in the tree, what God told him to tell him that all he'd have to do is walk back down the road. How when he came back, the, the tree wanted him to dig up the treasure and the girl wanted, wanted him to marry her. And he just kept walking. And, and finally, the wolf's getting impatient. And he said, he said, OK, OK, OK. Then what did God say about me? And he said, here's what God told me to tell you. He said that one day there would come a man walking down the road who's so stupid that when that man comes walking down the road, you're to eat him. And the wolf jumps on the man and eats him whole. And the wolf was never, ever hungry again. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's an old story. It's been told in many different versions. And, uh, and, I, and I've heard similar stories to it with different endings through the years. But, but I love the message. I mean, everything he needed was right in front of him. It was all provided for him, but he didn't recognize it. And he walked by, you know, wealth. He walked by the person who would allow him never to be lonely again or hungry again. And he walked right into harm's way because he wasn't paying attention. So I love that. Little, I love that old story. I love to tell that one. That's, so, that's a great it. story. And it, it personifies us so much because so often God has the answer right there in front of us. And we don't see it. Oftentimes our, our prayer should be not God, can you give me this, but God, can you help me see where you've already given it to me? And, and that that story illustrates that perfectly. I love yeah, it. It, it's just a great way. And there again, it gives you handles. There's a lesson there. And it's it, it, we've engaged the imagination. I, every time I tell that story, I imagine the wolf. I imagine the girl. I imagine the tree. It engages the imagination. And I think takes us to a deeper place of, of, of recognition and learning and touches us emotionally as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, I was, I mean, I was, I was seeing that, like we said earlier, you know, when you tell a good story, it paints a picture. And I was actually, I was watching the guy talk <laughs> with the wolf and watching him talk with this beautiful woman and watching him talk to the tree and, and eventually to God. I, I was experiencing that as you were, you were telling that story. And, and that's part of, I believe the, the power of stories. Yeah. Th that's another thing you can do when you're telling a story, you paint a picture. And, yeah. and I, I rushed through that story. I usually take a little bit longer to tell that story. Just, I probably should have picked another one, but I rushed through it uh, a little quicker than I normally would. But what I like to do is also illustrate it, engage, you know, with details, Sometimes the, the, the key to storytelling is, is, is focusing on certain details yep. and bringing those details to life. And, and there again, that's all a part of engaging the listener. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was uh, Charles Osgood that said, because um, you always hear, and I think Joe said this earlier, he was talking about, you know, they say that a picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah. Uh, Charles Osgood said, compared to the spoken word, a picture is a pitiful thing indeed. <laughs> So, yeah. and, and now my wife is giving me a stare because she is a photographer. I'm looking for something. <laughs> now she's throwing things at me. No. That's part of my story. <laughs> well, here, here's the difference. Anytime that, it, whether it's a picture or a movie, um, what we're doing is we're providing what it all looks like for you. Whereas in a story, 
you can engage your own imagination. And the way you vision the story may be a little bit different than how I envision the story. Yeah. And, and that's just the unique way God's made us. And I apologize. We're having vacation Bible school this week. <laughs> and all that background noise is the classroom next door to me right now. So yeah, I apologize. That's, that's fine. You know, as you were telling this story, you know, and as Tommy was saying, as you, you know, you really picture yourself being in the story. And as he's gone by the tree and the tree's telling him about the treasure, I'm like, dig the treasure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. You know, you and you, it's so it's so much that way. And when he's meeting the uh, lovely young woman, you're like, there she is, you know, and, and he yeah. walks by and you're like, ah, oh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, the story could have ended right there. When he met the young woman who was lonely and he was lonely and she had everything he needed, could yeah. have ended right there. Yeah. But ha happily ever after. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But it did. Well, it only ended well for the wolf in this story. That's so. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unfortunately, too many stories end well for the wolf and not for the rest of us. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, Doug, what is next for Doug Martin? What's on the horizon? I know you're going through through some transition here, so so share with us a little bit of that. Well, yeah, I mean, um, one of the cool things I'm excited about is is taking taking storytelling to a different place. Um, uh, we're we're getting ready to uh, have a website, uh, Doug Martin Storytelling. Uh, actually, Tammy's helping me with all this, and I appreciate all of her help. It's uh, www doug martin storytelling.com and and i'll be be going places to tell stories but i'm also we're also doing a podcast uh it's a storytelling podcast uh and we'll be we'll be dropping those this summer probably mid-summer we'll be coming out with those and it's going to be a weekly podcast about 30 minutes where we get on and either tell stories or talk about storytelling i invite some guests uh to come and tell stories uh, just an opportunity to come in and, and just to explore storytelling, um, hoping to go to churches and tell Bible stories uh, and not just churches, but places that would let me do that uh, just to travel and tell stories in, in, a, in a greater venue. And I might even do a little writing. We're we're contemplating that, too. Um, we are at a place in our life where we're transitioning. And so it's a great opportunity to, to transition and, and to be. To, to tell stories. I guess storytelling is a hobby for me, has been. I've always enjoyed doing it and love to have the opportunity to do it, get excited about doing it. So we're going to be doing that through the podcast and the website will give information about where I'm going to tell stories and opportunities for people to invite me to come in and tell stories at their place. And, you know, it's personal stories, it's Bible stories, it's old folk tales like the one I just told a minute ago, uh, just, just to do that. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Now, I'm awesome. kind of entering the last chapter of my life. And, uh, and this is the way I want to, I want to wind it all up is telling stories and yeah. then making connections through stories to, to faith, you know, helping people have a stronger faith connection in, in, in Christ uh, through the, through the art of storytelling. Absolutely. All right. I, I, I work with Doug on, on some of this stuff and, and Doug, I, I don't know if you're going to make it, public yet, but I'm making it public. Um, Doug has this amazing, very, very um, clever idea about a world tour. Oh, tell, yeah. us, tell us a little bit about your world tour. Doug. Yeah, let's hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm going to go on a world tour telling stories. And, uh, and I hope, I've not got it all worked out, so this is all going to happen over the next 12 months probably. Uh, I hope to go to London and Paris and Frankfurt, uh, Baghdad. Um, I've, I've, I've got, I've, I've got all these places that I'm going to go and tell stories in this For world sale. tour. Of course, it's, it's, it's actually London, Kentucky and Paris, Kentucky and Frankfurt, <laughs> Kentucky and Baghdad, Kentucky, but it's going to be a world tour and I'm going to go these places and tell stories and we're hoping to record those and then make those available to people and, and, in ways that they can, you know, they can have those stories. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited about the world tour. I really am. See, isn't that, that is clever? Awesome. It's just that a clever. Is great. I love it. And stories from the center of the universe. All those places around the world are right there in Kentucky. Yeah. yeah so, the, yeah, the, the, podcast, the podcast is called Stories from the Center of the Universe. And it kind of centers around where we grew up, Tommy, Keevy, uh, yeah. Keevy, Kentucky. And then just stories from there and stories I've heard through life. But uh, I've always tried to be an advocate 
for the fact that Kiwi, Kentucky is actually the center of the universe. And, uh, and I do my best to, to, to broadcast that so that people can be educated. There you go. <laughs> now, I heard someone once say that Kiwi was more like the armpit of the universe, but I don't believe that at all. I believe it to be the center of the universe. <laughs> That's good. That's good to hear. You know, Tommy, Tommy said something before that, you know, after he's given a sermon, people have never really come up to him and said, you know, that, that fact really, you know, meant a lot to me or that's, but you know, the, the stories that you tell and that you told tonight, they're not only meaningful, but they stick with someone, you know, they re they really do. And people remember those. And, and Tommy, some of the stories that you've told over the few years that I've gotten to know you have stuck with me and I know they stuck in, they've stuck with others. So I think it's such a powerful part of, of preaching. And as, as Jesus did, it enables enable someone not only to, to hear and experience the word, but to, to literally, you know, in, interpret it and understand yep. sometimes it's the meaning behind the story. Yeah. You know, as, as the yeah. one that you just told. Powerful yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, you know, the, the thing is, is that people love to hear stories over and over. They don't want to hear the same sermon over and over. Okay, <laughs> Once they've heard it once, let it go. Um, if, you, if you wait a year or two, they forget about it and you can use it again. But if they still remember it, it's like, man, what are you doing? I've heard that. Yeah. But they love hearing stories over it. Matter of fact, both of those stories that Doug told, I've probably heard him tell it at least 10, possibly 20 times. And, but I love it. I, I, I was not here going, oh, yeah, I've heard this one. I was, I was still, I was in the story as he was telling it because that's the effect that stories have. It's just a, it's just a wonderful thing. Yeah, I, I don't even apologize anymore at church when I'm using a story that I've already used. I yeah. remind them that they listen, they watch the same commercials over and over again. <laughs> so I can tell the same stories over and there over again. Go. Until there they quit go. doing that, I, I can tell the same stories. But but you're right, people do. They do. And in fact, they get excited sometimes. Oh, I want to hear that story. Or tell yeah. that one. Well, you've heard it before. I know, but tell it, tell it. I want you to tell it, you know. And people do get excited fact, about that. Earlier, when I said you got a uh, one or two stories that you want to share with us, and you you said, um, well, I don't really know which story to tell. And in the back of my mind, I was going, tell the snake stories. Tell the snake stories. <laughs> and then that's the one you told. Well, so. good, good. I'm glad it worked out there. <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, it's not always a good thing to visualize the story. Because I don't know that I'll ever be able to touch a tree trunk in the dark again or a tree root. You don't have to worry about it on Long Island. Oh, yeah. Well, true. But they still have We have there. a few snakes, but no poisonous as, snakes. Hey, as long as you got a light with you, you're okay. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> There Shine you your light. Shine my light. All right, Doug, we are we are getting close to time here. Do you have any last bit of advice that you would like to share with our viewers before we wrap up here? Yeah, it, it's this. Everybody can tell a story. And everybody has a story to tell. And uh, and, and so don't be afraid of your story. Mm. OK, no matter how messy it may seem. Uh, God can use your story. He can redeem your story just as he redeems our lives. And he can use our faith stories to redeem, help redeem others. And so, so never be afraid to tell your story. And then the second thing is, is that storytelling is, it's, it's, a, it's a craft. So work at it. And uh, it's something you can get better at. And there are stories everywhere. So keep your eyes open. And you'll never you never know when you might you might walk into the next story that you've got to tell mm -hmm. uh, that you never knew was just right around the corner. So yeah. always be ready with your eyes open. But awesome. everybody has a story. Be bold. Tell your story. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. All right. Ooh, that ought to be the name of your book, Doug. Be bold. Tell your story. <laughs> be bold. There tell you your go. story. Maybe. Right. You never know. <laughs> All right, Joe, we got about a minute, man. You got any last no, words? I just want to thank Doug for joining us. You know, Doug, at some point, we'd love to have you come come up to New York. Um, it is really, truly the center of the universe up here. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to come. Yeah, no, but it, it would be awesome to have you come and we'll have a special event at the church. But um, I, I agree what you said about storytelling. I think we're called as Christians to tell our story, to bless others with how God is changed us and come into our lives. So again, brother, love you so much. And thank you for joining us tonight. Love the stories. Thank you too. Love you guys. Yeah. All right. 
Hey guys, thank you uh, for being on here. Doug, thank you for being our, our special guest tonight and sharing with us the power of story and even giving us some examples of that tonight as well. That was greatly appreciated. Guys, thank you all for being on here. We love you coming on here. We love being with you. It's a great time. <laughs> hey, listen, we are, uh, we are still in the middle of our Evangelism 101. And uh, we're, we're, we're continuing to go through that. Hopefully some of the things that we have talked about in this series have helped you maybe overcome some of the nervousness that you have about evangelism. But, uh, but th these are just some nuts and bolts about sharing your faith with other people. And then our series that comes up after we're done with this one is going to be specifically about God's story and your story and how they come together. And so we're looking forward to that. We love you guys. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you for joining.